There are so many types of wine. Where do I start? How do I choose a wine for a dinner party? How long does wine last once it's open? Or how do I store my wine? Come to Remedy Wine Club and learn about wine. We have classes Tuesday night for beginners and Friday night wine tasting for everyone. See you at Remedy. For more information, go to RemedyLiquor.com. I'm Mr. Christopher, your wine specialist here at Remedy Liquor. What I do is I try to find the best wines from around the world and bring them to you with the lowest prices. I know that that seems like a kind of an old cliche type thing to do, but that's exactly what I do here. We have a large selection of wines from around the world, from Armenia and Georgian wines to, of course, Napa Valley Cabernet wines. A little bit about our Tuesday night wine classes. These are classes that we put together for beginners to wine, people that don't know that much about wine. I'm here to help explain to you things such as how to open a bottle of wine, how to read a label on a bottle of wine, what's in that bottle of wine, and how much does this bottle of wine cost. Those are the kind of things we talk about on Tuesday nights. It's an area where you can be free to ask any questions you have about the wine, about the wine business, about anything at all. Most of the time I start off with two or three points to make, but generally it devolves into a Q&A. So I'm always happy to be there to uh, deal directly with people one-on-one -on -one and help them find wines that they enjoy. So what am I doing here? Well, what I'm doing is I am building a community of like-minded wine individuals, people that can come together and talk about wine, learn about wine, and buy wine in a fun and interactive environment. Um, when I first came on board to the store, I noticed two things. One, people didn't know a lot about wine. And two, nobody wants to buy a wine that they haven't tried. So to fix that, I started doing wine classes for beginners on Tuesdays. That is a wine class that anybody can come to. It is a chance for you to learn the basics about wine and about wine tasting. Um, and then on Friday nights, we have a Try Before You Buy event where we taste two or three, four wines. You get a special price that night, and it gives you a good chance to kind of see what it is that we're doing here in the store. One thing we do pride ourselves on here at Remedy is our vast, vast selection of wines and champagnes. Um, I mean, champagne does come from a small area, but I have sparkling wines from around the world. Uh, Spanish Cavas, Proseccos from Italy. I even have Armenian sparkling wines. Quite a few flavors. Come on by and see. Uh, as far as domestic wines go, I've got all the wines you could think of. Pinot Noirs from Oregon. I've got Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa Valley, some of the best in the world. I've also got wines for your banquet and wedding needs. If you need some cases of sparkling wines at certain prices, I'm here to help with that as well. That's just what we do here at Remedy. Most people ask me, Mr. Christopher, I don't know anything about wine. Can you please start at the beginning? And I say, okay. Let's just pull up a bottle of wine. This is a bottle of wine. This is the front label on a bottle of wine. And this is the back label of a bottle of wine. This portion right here is called the capsule. And I'm talking about the metal piece around the top. And inside the top of this bottle, there's usually a cork to keep the wine inside. Now, sometimes it's not a cork. Sometimes it can be a uh, synthetic closure or it can be a screw cap. I'm sure you've seen those around. Don't be scared. A screw cap simply means that the wine was bottled at its peak and that it's ready to drink right now. Now, once we get to the bottle of wine, we want to look at the label and see what that label tells us. From a label, you can learn a lot about a bottle of wine, or it can offer no information whatsoever. Everything is different. In California, specifically in North America, uh, most of the wine is labeled according to the variety that is inside that bottle. For example, this wine here, Merlot. But according to American bottling laws, this wine only has to be 85% Merlot in order to be called Merlot on the front of the label. Now, the winemakers do or do not have to disclose the other grapes that are in the blend. Some choose to, some do not. This can cause confusion among consumers. What I'm here to do is to help you cut through that confusion because I always base it upon do I like the wine inside the bottle as opposed to liking a wine for a pretty label or maybe I read about it somewhere or somebody told me it was wonderful. A good trick I like to use is this. If I like the wine, I buy it. If I don't like the wine, I do not buy it. Those are good rules that will help you become a better wine consumer. Gyan kharashke, vori yurakhanchur varkyan, betke sirova prel. 
Սիրով եւ երախտագիտության պահին ամենի համար ինչ ունենք Սկսած այս արևի տակապրելու նա եւ երազելու իրավունքից որ տրված է ամենքից Երազանքներն իրականանում են երբ հավատում ենք դրանց Հույսը հավատն ու սերն են կյանքի իրական առաջնորդողը Վայելենք կյանքներ պիսին ինչ պիսին կա Ռեմեդի լիքյոր All right Let's start at the beginning. What is wine? Wine is a fermented alcoholic beverage that is made from grapes or some other fruit. Pretty simple. The first wine that most people make is like strawberry rhubarb wine because the strawberry and the rhubarb kind of ferment each other and then boom it makes itself right there in your little homemade bucket. Um most wines, uh the wines that we sell here are made of grape. Although I do sell pomegranate wine, I do have black currant wine and of course, you know, other wines that are made from fruits. But most of the wine that we talk about serious wines are made from grapes. And those grapes specifically is uh Vitus vinifera <laughs> as I say it many times, Vitus vinifera, which is the grapes that are generally grown in the European continent. Now in America there's lots of native grapes, but most of the grapes that are uh grown and the ones that we love have come from Europe or come from Italy or come from somewhere over there and then been brought here and cross planted into America where success and great wine boomed in the 70s and 80s. When we talk about wines that we like to drink, we normally refer to those wines from the grapes that they're made of. Oh, I like a big bad cabernet. I like a pinot noir that's very full of finesse and life. I like a riesling that's very smooth. Um these are all in the American terms. These are all choices that we've chosen to make because uh it's what we like. Taste buds are the number one reason or the number one like kind of memory kicker. If you taste a wine and you remember that you had that wine at your parents' wedding 20 years ago, it'll take you right back to that spot. That's the power of flavor, of smell, of taste and mixed with the power of memory. That's why most of us prefer wine uh anyway because generally with wine you have friends, food, family, you know, a reason to be enjoyed around the table. Um, you know, and it's not quite as bad for you as the grain liquor. There are so many types of wine. Where do I start? How do I choose a wine for a dinner party? How long does wine last once it's open? Or how do I store my wine? Come to Remedy Wine Club and learn about wine. We have classes Tuesday night for beginners and Friday night wine tasting for everyone. See you at Remedy. For more information, go to remedyliquor.com. Welcome back. Let's talk about something that you love, something that I love, something the whole world loves. Champagne. Now, if wine or champagne, sparkling wine in this case, if the sparkling wine comes from champagne, it's called champagne. If it comes from somewhere else in the world, it has a different name. It's called cava if it comes from Spain. Some of the ones made in Italy are called prosecco, and of course here in North America we make sparkling wine. The reason that the wine is sparkly and has the bubbles in it is due to a secondary fermentation put on by the winemakers. Um this might be a little technical, but that secondary fermentation is a result of usually added sugar right before the bottling fermentation process. And then the secondary fermentation takes place right in the bottle. All that stuff said, we love bubbles. It produces a lot of pressure, a lot of fun. You'll notice there's a kind of a special safety cap here on the top. It's because this bottle is under a lot of pressure. If you open this up unsafely, this cork will go flying and hit uh hopefully somebody you don't like. Now, there are many styles of champagne. This particular one here is noted as rosé. Uh I know a lot of people want to call it the rose wine, but it's pronounced rosé, so we'll call it rosé. What that means is that the wine generally has a pink tint to it. It generally has a little bit more of the Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier grapes. Let's talk about those grapes. Not only Remedy Liquor is your favorite liquor store and carries a huge selection of wine and liquor, but it's also available right at your fingertips. Remedyliquor.com. Order all the wine and liquor you need with a huge variety and the best prices. Vodka, whiskey, cognac, tequila, wine, and champagne. Check out our everyday specials and find the best deals available. Your entire favorite wine and liquor in one place and we ship or deliver it to your door. Easy, convenient and connected. Go to remedyliquor.com for your next order. 
The three main grapes that go into Champagne are Chardonnay, which is a white grape, Pinot Meunier, and Pinot Noir, which are red grapes. If a wine is made of 100% Chardonnay, that's called Blanc de Blanc, and it'll say so right on the bottle. If a wine is made up of 100% of the red grapes, be it Pinot Noir or a combination of Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier, then the label will say Blanc de Noir, the white from the red. Um, generally, most of the wines and champagnes that we drink, sparkling wines, are marked as brut, which is a form of dryness. There's actually uh, extra dry, which is not as dry as brut. Once again, the confusing world of champagne sets in. Now, a lot of the styles I sell here in Glendale is demi-sec, which means that there is a higher level of sugar added to this bottle. It results in a sweeter, um, much less crisp, more round, kind of, you know, fun style of wine. That is the way that most champagnes used to be, 1700s, 1800s, early 1900s. We've discovered that it's a very, very sweet style of champagne that was the, the, the norm. Nowadays, Brut is the king of champagnes. And here at Remedy Liquor, we sell tons of champagne. We have champagne for all your needs. Uh, we also have sparkling wines for all your needs. I have sparkling wines from around the world, from Latvia, Russia, Armenia, all the way to Canada, and um, that's about it. Now, a lot of people come to me and say, Mr. Christopher, I don't have a lot of money to spend on wines, but I want to get into it. Do I have to spend a lot of money in order to get a nice bottle of wine? The answer is no. There's great bottles out there for $10. Now, if you consider $10 to be a great amount of money, I don't know what to tell you. But a good rule of thumb is this. Whatever you would spend on lunch, spend that on a bottle of wine, and it'll probably be a wine that's nice for you. Also, don't be fooled by sale prices or high points or anything besides that. My rule of thumb is this. If you like the wine, drink it. Buy it. If you don't like the wine, don't drink it. Don't buy it. There's nothing worse than the fear of missing out. And then a lot of people run to buy a certain wine because it got a write-up in a magazine or somebody said it was wonderful. And it might be wonderful for them, but it might not be wonderful for you. I feel that wine is very personal. And unless the wine is 100 points to me, I don't really want to drink it. So I hope you feel the same way. Not every movie that has won Best Picture is at my house. Not every uh, highly acclimated uh, whatever it is is out there, you know, that's not what you have to go for. In the wine business, you really have to find what it is that you like and go for that. Uh, the ranges can be from $5, you know, Nero Davola from Sicily to I have $1,500 wines here behind me. Um, each one of them is made for a particular reason. Perhaps that reason is just to be poured down the sink, but most winemakers have a vision when they make their wine. It's up to you whether that vision matches what it is you want. Remember, you're the consumer. You're in charge. I recommend that you find wines that you like and buy those wines. Stay away from the wines you don't like. How do we know what we like and what we don't like? We taste the wines. And then if it's something that's terrible, I can check it right off my list. I no longer have to worry about that wine. Um, there's literally millions of wines produced every year. And I'm sure that with a little work, we can find the wine that is right for you. There are so many types of wine. Where do I start? How do I choose a wine for a dinner party? How long does wine last once it's open? Or how do I store my wine? Come to Remedy Wine Club and learn about wine. We have classes Tuesday night for beginners and Friday night wine tasting for everyone. See you at Remedy. For more information, go to RemedyLiquor.com. All right, friends. You know we're in Glendale. When you hear those cars honking, I know it makes me feel like I'm right at home. So what we're doing on Friday nights is wine tastings, and we would like to invite you. We're going to just make it easy for you. Five dollars, three wines, two hours. Try to make it simple. Um, what we do, we'll taste one wine that's probably, you know, the $10 range, something that's nice, though. And then we'll taste something in the medium, $20 to $25 range. And I try to bring on something that's a little bit nicer. Uh, we also offer special pricing each night. The themes that I offer, I try to make them broad strokes, but still with the ability to make everybody happy. We have themes such as Cabernet Sauvignon, the wines of France, wines of Italy. Sometimes we get very specific and we'll do an evening of Chianti, things like that. When the summertime comes, there'll definitely be rosé tastings and of course, champagne tastings. So log on to RemedyLiquor.com to find all of our 
tasting schedules, and our class schedules. Not only Remini Liquor is your favorite liquor store and carries a huge selection of wine and liquor, but it's also available right at your fingertips. RemediLiquor.com. Order all the wine and liquor you need with a huge variety and the best prices. Vodka, whiskey, cognac, tequila, wine, and champagne. Check out our everyday specials and find the best deals available. Your entire favorite wine and liquor in one place, and we ship or deliver it to your door. Easy, convenient, and connected. Go to RemediLiquor.com for your next order. Let's go with that. Okay. Why am I here? I am here to help you on your personal wine journey. I liken myself to an old golf pro, you know. I care about your game. I know what it is that I like. So I've really dedicated myself to helping you find wines and to find the wine experience that you're looking for. Let's answer a few of your questions and see if I can help you some more. There are so many types of wines, where do I start? That's a pretty good question. I would suggest you start with a softer style of red wine or even a softer style of white wine. Perhaps a Pinot Noir or some Riesling. Uh, really, wine is about what it is that you like. So before you try wine, you really have to know what styles you're going for. Do you want something heavy and bold? Do you want something kind of lighter and sweeter? Uh, any good wine professional will be able to help you. And what I really suggest you do is try wines, even if it's a wine that you don't care for. You can check it off your list and you're on your way to enjoying some other wine. Let's move on. How do I choose wine for a dinner party? Well, obviously, the first thing is going to be, what are you serving for dinner? Once we match that, let's go over a few tips that might help you with your next party. One, a wine bottle generally has about four glasses of wine in it. Five if you pour a little bit smaller, but for restaurant-style pours, seven-ounce pour, a bottle of wine generally has four glasses in there. So you're going to need at least one bottle for every four people. Also, you're going to have to know how long your event is because that's going to determine how many times those glasses are going to be filled over the course of the evening. Um, I know that those seem like very uh, vague terms, but once you have those details figured out, I can help you out with finding the wines that are going to make you uh, a good host. Let's move on. How long does wine last once I've opened it? This is an excellent question. Thank you, David. Um, most wines last about a day. Now, there's lots of gimmicks out there to pump the air out of the wine or to seal them or to make them work or this and that. If you find one that works for you, by all means, use that. But I'm going to go with just opening a bottle of wine and not using anything. Generally, it'll, a bottle of wine will last a couple days. Uh, if you want to slow down that process, you can stick the wine in the fridge although I do not recommend putting it on the door. And that will help keep your wine maybe a couple of days. Now, some wines go bad immediately. Five, six hours after they open, they're not ready to go. Some wines, like some of the crazy Italian wines that we sell here at Remedy Liquor, they even require a couple days to open up. I've opened up wines, and I thought they were terrible. and went back the next day, and they were wonderful. That's part of the mystery and beauty of this thing called wine. Final question tonight is, how should I store my wine? It's oh, a great question also. Um, the correct answer to that question is you should store your wine in an area that is free of light and heat and you should store the bottles at an angle so that the corks stay moist. Now if you have a screw cap wine obviously that's not a problem but the key is heat and light. Those are the enemies of wine storage. So you want to keep your wine as cool and dank and dark as possible. Think of the wine caves in Europe. I hope this has been helpful. And uh, if you ever have any questions, you can always email me direct, wine at remedyliquor.com. I'm always here to answer you and help you out with what it is you need with your wines. Thank you very much for visiting us today at the Remedy Wine Club upstairs at Remedy Liquor in Glendale, California. I'm Mr. Christopher. Thank you. There are so many types of wine. Where do I start? How do I choose a wine for a dinner party? How long does wine last once it's open? Or, how do I store my wine? Come to Remedy Wine Club and learn about wine. We have classes Tuesday night for beginners and Friday night wine tasting for everyone. See you at Remedy. For more information, go to RemedyLiquor.com. Gyan kharashke, vori yurakan churvat gyan betke sirov aprel. Sirov yev yerakta gitu tsyang pahin ameni hamar inchuneng. Սկսած այս արևի տակապրելու նաև երազելու իրավունքից, որ տրված է ամենքիս։ Երազանքներն իրականանում են, երբ հավատում ենք դրանց։ 
հույսը հավատնուսերն են կյանքի իրական առաջնորդողը։ Վայել ենք կյանքն ենպիսին, ինչպիսին կա։ Հեմ է դիլիքյար։